Hi everyone, I'm excited to announce that my new add-on for Blender is finally available. It's called Modular Workspaces, and it's all about speeding up the startup file workflow in Blender. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look for a few demonstrations, talk about the features. I'm going to explain why I've created the add-on, and if you're interested, then maybe you can check it out and see if it will improve your workflow. So first of all, what does the add-on do? Well, first of all, if you're starting from a basic file, so this is my current startup file with nothing in it, we just got some world nodes making a blue background. If I want to get started with my artwork, there are a few common things I would do to basically prepare the file for 3D content. So that involves adding some lighting, maybe doing like a light or shadow catcher, kind of importing basic materials and stuff like that. To make this actually bare bones and basic, I'm going to completely clear out the file and I'm also going to delete these world nodes. Okay, so now the file is clean, I'm going to do this. HDRI template, HDRI and color background, plug the color in to the surface, Diorama, studio lighting, light catcher, camera, unpack setup, zero, go. So now we have a professional starting point for our 3D artwork. Um, but what's just happened there? What did I just do? So I dragged in a few world nodes from my new asset collection, and I also dragged in a few collection assets. But you'll notice something interesting. They're all perfectly centered. They're all perfectly aligned with each other. They're all organized into collections. There are no trailing empties or anything. So how did that happen? Okay, well, let me explain something. When you're dragging collection assets into Blender, for example, let me bring this test donut in, you'll notice that it's basically just a single object. It's a collection and it contains another collection. It's a bit of a weird layout. And I think Blender technically considered these as empty objects. To actually bring in the content that's contained inside of that collection asset you need to press Control a make instances real and then it brings in the content but it also leaves in this trailing empty object which we don't need another weird thing about collection assets is for example let me bring in a three point lighting setup when we make those instances real they don't preserve the collections that they were originally contained in in the file that they were created in which makes it a bit tricky to do organization another thing is of course that if we're dragging these things into the scene they're not centered in the world. They kind of drop where our cursor is. And that's a bit of a problem because if we wanted to use these collection assets to kind of build our perfect starter scene, we would need to manually recenter them. So if I just press this clear file button again, what the add-on does is it lets us quickly drag in the elements we want. And then with the press of a button, it automatically recenters everything, unpacks all the collections, deletes all of the trailing empties and organizes them into collections based on their type. So like I said, that's all done with one button press right there. Okay, let me press the clear file button and we'll do another demonstration. So you notice that the assets here in the asset browser are color coded in different ways. So like the blue ones, for example, are going to be collection based objects. So for example, this is a cloud collection, but we can get like a nice cloud field going. Let me bring in another camera, unpack that, make that the active one. So those are the blue ones, right? The object ones. The green ones are obviously for lighting. So we've got the three point set up there in the studio lighting. The orange ones are for camera related objects and the purpley ones are for world node groups. So for example, I've got this cloudy scene here but I want to make it look like I'm in an atmosphere so let me grab the altitude low group drag that into the world nodes plug that into the surface and now we are floating around in the sky because we've got this low atmosphere group. So basically with one node group and one collection object there, we've gone from our diorama scene, which we saw earlier, to now an atmospheric cloudy landscape. Okay, let's get rid of the atmosphere now and clear out the file again. Okay, so for this next demonstration, I'm back in my regular startup scene, which has this blue background here given by the HDRI and color background node. So what I want to do now is I'm imagining I want to make a character render. I've got a character model. I want to put it in an infinite scene. And what I mean by an infinite scene it's basically where the ground and the background go on forever you can see the shadows of the character you usually do this with a shadow catcher so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to substitute my character model for the test donut and we're going to do that so test donut shadow catcher three point lighting unpack so now what you see here is we have a donut in a scene which seems to go on forever we can have the shadow catcher kind of catching the shadows on the ground there but there's no end in sight. So again, by just dragging in a few of these asset presets and by clicking the unpack setup, we have completely organized this scene. It's ready to go. We have wonderful lighting. We have a shadow catcher. Oh, very good. You might have also noticed a few different things in the interface. For example, there's a new button up here in the top right of the 3D view called asset browser. Also on the asset browser, there are a couple of extra buttons. We have default params, meaning parameters and close asset browser. Okay, well, what do these do? Again, going back to a completely basic startup 
file to demonstrate this, I've closed the asset browser. Sometimes when I'm doing my artwork, I want to access the browser, but I only want it there temporarily. And if you've been around for a while, you may have remembered that my asset browser was always kind of stuck here at the bottom of the 3D view. I used to close and expand it a lot, the same with the world nodes, but there's a quirk with Blender I've always hated, which is where if you bring two interface elements down to the bottom, when you bring them back up, they will be connected rather than separate. And that's annoying because if I want to bring up the asset browser quickly, it also brings up the world nodes and that used to disrupt my shader nodes. So I thought, right, I'm done with that. I'm bored of it. How do I solve this problem? Well, now my workflow goes like this. If I want to access the asset browser, press the asset browser button, press default parameters, bring in what I want, close the asset browser and you're done. So we open it, get what we want, go away. No more having to like go to the corner, drag up this thing and click here, open the asset browser, then click over here to access my favorite asset library, then click over here to kind of access my favorite thumbnail size, you know? None of that boring stuff. Now, one button, default, to get the content closed, gone. So these are just like convenience buttons that I have added because they improve my workflow. They're just personal preference. You don't have to use them, but I've put them there because I want them. Okay, now if we come over to this interface panel, you'll see that we've got a few values in here. So default asset library and default thumbnail size. So if I open the asset browser again, when we press the default parameters button, it's going to look at these two things and then set the default values in the asset browser based on that. So my default asset library is called asset library. If I go to edit preferences, file paths and scroll down, you'll see the asset libraries here. I've created one called asset library. So that's the one it's going to open. And then my default thumbnail size is tiny. So you can choose that here and it's basically going to set that automatically for you. You'll also see the open amount. So this is basically going to decide how far the asset browser is going to take over the free view when we press the asset browser button. So for example, with the asset browser closed, if I set that to something like 50, then press asset browser is going to take up 50% of the screen. But I kind of like keeping that at around 20, 25. I think that's a good value. Also, we have the option for the split direction. So if I set that to vertical, it's going to split vertically instead of horizontally. You know, maybe some people will like that. If I press default parameters and press T to hide that, you know, you can get that access there pretty quickly, but uh, I like having it horizontally instead. Okay, so you can access everything quickly that way but one thing I still want to figure out how to do is have a category or a subcategory selected by default because I think that would be handy as well. So a few extra things you're going to notice is that when you're dragging in content like this there are a couple of options up here in the top right. So we have selected only and center on unpack. These are a couple of options to customize the unpacking behavior. So center on unpack does exactly what it says. When we are unpacking the setup, it centers everything back to the world origin. So everything is perfectly in line. Uh, you don't have to have that active. So for example, if I bring uh, the content back, if I disable center and unpack and unpack everything, you'll see it stays exactly where it was. Okay, so another option here is selected only because by default, it unpacks all of the collection assets. The reason for this is because it's intended to help with startup workflows. So when you're just dragging everything in, you just want to press one button and boom, it's ready. It's organized into new collections. Fine. But if you want to use this behavior in more complex scenes, when you might already have collection assets in the scene, for example, an interior design scene where you've got like different pieces of furniture, which are collection assets and you don't want to unpack them, then you can press selected only and it's only going to unpack what you had selected. So see here, I have the studio lighting collection. I tick selected only, unpack. It's only unpacked the studio lighting and it's moved the lights into the lights collection for us automatically. Okay, so you have the options there to change the behavior of the unpacking however you like. Now there are a variety of different collection assets and world nodes in here. I've created these based on, again, my personal workflow. You don't have to use my asset library if you don't want to. So basically in the product, there's going to be three main files. There's going to be the zip file for the add-on. And the add-on is, as we've seen, going to make a new tab over here in the sidebar, the end menu if you press N on the keyboard is going to open up the sidebar. That tab is called workspaces. There's going to be a few panels in here, information interface and setups. You install this add-on exactly the same way you install other add-ons. You go up to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then you press install. From there, you're going to choose the zip file that was downloaded. The second file that's included in the package is the .blend library file. So that's modular workspaces library.blend. You're going to put that file inside of any one of your asset libraries, and then this content is going to appear inside of that. You can organize them in your asset browser categories however you like. For example, I've got them all contained under a category called setups, and then I have subcategories for each of the different types. So as I 
add more presets, I'm going to add them to the right categories. You can organize these however you want. The third file that's included in the package is my basic startup file. So this is different than the one that's included in my CUDS defaults package on Gumroad. It looks like this pretty much. We have a basic world node setup. We have only a camera and a control object in the outliner. And then it's got the asset browser open. And then I've got it open on my asset library by default. Also the workspaces add-on is open by default for me. So basically it's ready for me to start building stuff out. So you might ask a question at this point. Okay, this is all cool, but why not just have different template files with all your different starting points that you want to use? So for example, one for atmospheric stuff, one for environments, one for like character modeling, animation and rigging, one for all of that. The answer is quite simple. Synchronizing parameters and my attention span. I have designed this tool for my personal workflow and my attention span. For example, if I had like 15 to 20 different blend files with all my different types of templates, if I wanted to change one render setting that I wanted to be consistent throughout all of those files, I have to change it individually for each of those 15 to 20 files. And that's just really frustrating and boring and I can't be bothered. So I want to keep everything in one startup file, but there's a problem because there are so many different possible starting points I can work from. And I don't want to have to have like all of these world node presets lined up in the world node tree because it's just going to clog everything up. I've got stuff in here for again like the altitudes, HDRIs, separating backgrounds from like the camera so you can have stuff affecting the objects without appearing in the background, doing like gradient stuff for stylized artworks. I don't want all of that just sitting around in the world nodes. Also same with everything else. For example if I bring in like my default corridor setup if I want to do corridor types of artworks, mirrored single vert objects or mirrored skin objects, like my sculpting template which has like this clay material by default from the the community material back contributed by Mel. Like all of these things, I don't want them just there in the outliner, disabled just in case I need them. So this is my solution. I have everything accessible to me from the asset browser. I can drag them in and unpack them with the click of a button. Paying attention to how I wanted the interface laid out, I have made buttons to customize how I can access that content. And I'm very, very happy with it. So it's just my personal tool, which I'm making available to you now. Modular workspaces, if you want to use it, you can. One more thing I will emphasize is that if you do want to use my personal asset library presets here with the add-on. First of all, everything is completely customizable. You can right click on this, open the blend file, and it's going to take you straight to the asset library file containing all of these presets. You can customize them, improve them, delete them if you like add extra ones to that file. You can change the icons if you want. You can press N while hovering in the asset library file. And from there you can add custom icons. So if you don't like what I've provided, you can change it for yourself. Also, this add-on does not just work with the collection assets I've got in my library. They work with any collection assets. So if you want to make your own startup focused collection assets and you want a fast way to unpack them and automatically organize them in your outliner, then you can use my add-on. It's not just for my content. Okay, let me improvise a bit here. Let me bring in a sculpting object and a shadow catcher, but we're also going to bring in the gradient background node and plug that into the surface and then go to the rendered mode. And now we have a customized gradient with the shadow catcher with a sculpting procedural clay object. Then from here, we have control over the directionality. As we rotate around the camera, we can see the different gradients going on there. We can also control their strength as well. For example, let me change the bag to something like more reddish. That's fine. So basically, as we said, there's a variety of stuff you can play with here. You can unpack everything automatically. So yes, hopefully I have explained the add-on okay, because it seems like quite a specific use case thing. I will also say that this add-on and this product and the, the package of files is paid. You know, a lot of the time I give like the workflow tools away for free. So this is paid because of a few reasons. First of all, it took quite a long time putting all these presets together and also designing my custom startup file and actually writing the add-on. But secondly, as you may know, I'm moving into a studio at some point in the future. The studio is technically part of a new family home, which we're renovating. It's going to take eight months, it's estimated, to complete the renovations. And also it's very expensive. So though I like to give as much of my stuff away for free as possible without harming myself, this one is going to be paid. I will continue to add to it over time as I work on my own presets, as I do different studies and my own projects. It's all part of this modular design, which I'm very interested in. I really like the idea of recycling content, but what I mean by modular design is like, you know, my modular metals product, it's a collection of procedural materials, but they're all based on modular nodes. So like the more complex materials are made up of slightly less complex node groups, which are made up of slightly less complex complex node groups, but as you improve each of those node groups, 
the improvements propagate upwards. So like if I improve the rust effects in the future, the complex iron materials are going to be improved as well because they're going to benefit from those rust improvements. Similarly, the unpack feature in this add-on, the organization part of that feature, which organizes things into collections, is based off my EasyBPY module, which is a module of Python helper functions for Blender, which is also utilized by the whole tools add-on. So like there's an outline and cleanup thing here where you can organize the collections. So when that function is improved at EasyBPY, it's also going to improve the functionality in both of these add-ons. So I'm obsessed with this whole like modular thinking, which is why the add-on's been designed this way. So as I'm going to be working on my new startups and different projects in the future, I'm going to improve these presets and make new ones and add them to this product. That way I'll be able to effectively recycle them better in the future. So again, first and foremost, this has been designed for myself, but it's now available for you to pick up if you like, if you want to follow along and use the same tools that I'm using. I would also say I've spent a bit more time on this product this time, building up nice documentation. So there's a Notion page, which you'll be able to find through the store page descriptions. And on there, it will provide you with a nice rundown of how to install everything, how to get it up and running, what features are available for you to try, I think there's also a little tutorial one there as well. So yeah, if you're interested, feel free to check it out. That's modular workspaces for Blender. If you pick up the product, you get all future updates for free, of course. So yes. And also, if you are a patron signed up to the Patreon before this video went out, you can also claim a discount on the product as well. That's one of our benefit tiers for the Patreon, by the way. If you're signed up when a new product comes out, you get a discount. But remember, that only applies for products which have released while you are signed up. Anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. I'm going to get back to making stuff. You can grab the product on Gumroad and Blender Market. Have a fantastic day, everyone, and I will see you next time.